Hello, hello everybody, and welcome back to the LJL officially unofficial broad press bringing you the LJL 2022 summer split. I will be your host with eyes getting cut off because my camera's in the incorrect place. Alex, otherwise known as Lexi, I go by Mars Swan on the internet. The man in the middle today is your play by play caster, one of the best people in the university sports scene, and up and comer. It's Kashka! He's here! Hello, sir. How are you? Hello, I'm doing great. Honestly, we've got some great matches to look forward to today, so I just can't wait to get into the action. And the other side of my monitor, your screen, LEC, NLC, but he got his start here, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, keep it, it going, is the keep one it going, and only Nymera. Hello, sir. Hello, hello. Back casting my uh, my home away from home. I'm starting to call it the LJL. Uh, going back to the old stomping grounds, and we have some really good games today. We're on for the first two, obviously Kashka and I. So it's gonna be really cool to touch base with the LJL, watch through all those games on day one, and had some pleasant surprises and some V3 axis surprises. But we're back for day two, and uh, lots of stuff to go through, huh? Was it worse than Sengoku Burning Core? That's... In some ways, yes. In others. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Anyway, with that said, day two is upon us. As you've already alluded to, you two will be covering the first two games, which will be Burning Core facing off against the Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks Gaming. Following that one, it's going to be Sengoku Gaming looking to continue that win streak facing off against Crest Gaming Act. And then we're going to be having Temporal and Initialize come in onto the broadcast. And they're going to be bringing Detonation Focus Me versus V3. I'm I'm looking forward to the desk for that one. Uh, yeah. And Rascal Justice versus Axis. Less looking forward to that desk. <laughs> Weirdly enough, I'm looking forward more to the DFM V3 desk just to see if uh, predictions on streaks and how things mm. will be going. Uh, but obviously, let's bring it to this first match. Obviously, this is Burning Core facing off against the Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks Gaming. And Nymera, these are two teams yes. who... Um, have very different uh, times in the LGL. Burning Core have been a team struggling to really find momentum. They can sometimes break into playoffs, but they never made playoffs with, under the previous system the LGL had. Hawks, well, they're a brand new team technically in the LJL, and they've never really flown, I would argue. I think that's a fair representation. Um... But actually, there's one thing which I would slightly disagree on, because you're right, Burning Claw didn't make those playoffs under the old system, but that was back when we only had about three teams making it in there, instead Very of true. the full six that we have um, out of the eight teams we have in the LGL. Consistently, Burning Claw would make it to a fourth place in the old system. Now in the new one, fair. of course, they've ended up kind of dipping down to again just the cusp of plows fifth and sixth they made it to a couple of times since 2020 but they have really really struggled in this last year for me a big thing about this burning core roster from spring is actually can you start becoming and reclaiming that heritage as kind of that mid to upper table team that we know burning core absolutely could be under the likes of rocky that great veteran mm. that they used to have in the mid lane for so long and then I compare that to the Hawks, because this is what I really want to tie together here. The Hawks came in 2020, they were meant to be a super team, and they didn't achieve that. Last place in their first split, and since then, they have now taken on that spot which Burning Core used to have. Just getting into playoffs, not proceeding mm. beyond that point. Now, both of them have ended up being in a very similar role. Just on the cusp of playoffs, first round, trying to break into that upper echelon. And for the first time last split... They faced each other. If you could actually throw to the graphic that we have, the full screen one, Absolute. this should visually really, really uh, des uh, describe well what we have because on paper, these teams finish very similar. On paper, these teams are in exactly the same ball ballpark. <laughs> they are the closest competition to each other, but Burning Core have the head-to-head -head where it matters in that best of five record, and they did that last split. SoftBank Hawks today, I would love to see them come out swinging and avenge that loss. So Kashka, as somebody that joined the region relatively recently, you aren't wound up in all the hype that we are. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, give us a level-headed take. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I would kind of disagree with uh, not being wound up in the hype because just looking at the last split, these teams had vastly different starts uh, with, uh, you know, Burning Guard being a great first round Robin, Hawks, not so much. And they still finished similarly. They had very different trajectories. They finished next to each other, and now they get to face each other this early on in this second split. I feel like this match is going to be kind of the defining factor moving forward, especially between those two teams who are, let's be honest, fighting for that fourth place between themselves and maybe throwing CJ to the conversation. 
mean placing is important. We've seen how important also that side selection can be. It, it would arguably was a defining fact in those finals versus Dead Nation Folks Me and Sengoku. So I mean, that fourth place is a lot more important than that fifth or sixth place, which is where these two teams that you both mentioned already really need to prioritize. But arguably they want to get third, second, or even just win this whole damn thing. <laughs> But um, something that um, I was talking to both of you about before we came on broadcast is um, Hawks kind of took, well, they did take uh, USG spot. And USG were yes, always yeah. more of a third place, second place kind of competitor. They rarely, well, I don't, actually, I don't believe they ever won the LGL, but they were always competition. Oh. <laughs> and that was Dash's team. Now, the reason that we can make this comparison is because I would argue this is still Dash's team. Um, Kashka, I want to come to you first. Mm -hmm. Do you think this version of the Hawks could be a third place team? It's a tough question. I think it depends on how Rascal Jester go through this play. They are currently the team oh, okay. uh, that... Uh, I mean, again, don't want to extrapolate too much, but Sengoku look great. DFM are DFM. So <laughs> if we're thinking about the third place, it comes down to, okay, can Rascal Jester find the same consistency they had towards the end of last split? If yes, then no, I don't think uh, Hawks can find third place. But if that's not the case, then sure, why not? Hey, what I about you, know, yeah. yeah, I think that's that, that's a good point in terms of the consistency of the top three teams, because I know that's something that actually, Kasha, you were talking to us a little bit about, saying, actually, no, these are our top three. Yeah, but for how long, and can they keep that up? That's one thing. But one thing which I've been hearing quite a lot is that um, when you look at the, the, uh, a couple of the people who have been scrimming these teams, they have been saying, actually, yeah, Rascal Jester are doing really well on those scrims. They look, they're coming into this, this uh, split pretty hot right now. Actually, their games the other day, they ended up having a solid victory versus the Hawks. There were some early game worries, and then they just kind of turned it on and absolutely smashed out that game. As soon as Sol didn't die in a team fight, it was like, okay, game's over. I think that Rascal Jester in this current meta are really, really scary. Sengoku just beat DFM, and DFM are still DFM. You're absolutely right to do that. So in terms of being a third place team, that would have to come down to a similar thing for both of these teams, because there's one role I would love to focus on for both these teams, and that's the junglers. Now, I think that... <laughs> okay right so we'll have to talk about those junglers a little later then see if those uh champ those ch players end up picking up some priority champions however as we know with uh these kind of metas these kind of drafts often it's the ad carries which are focused out on binding core band away too already Indeed they did, and on the other side, Hawks taking with the Renata and the Corky now. Gragas also a ban specifically against the Ray Farky. I mean, what Renata Gragas immediately signify to me is Hawks don't want to play against hard disengage. There's disengage and it's also backline access. The thing about mm -hmm. Renata is that she's really, really good at reaching people who think they're safe, and you're sat there as a jinx going, haha, I'm auto-attacking. Now I'm auto-attacking my teammates. That's probably not for the best. They end up reaching that back line. These are all very long-range picks in what they do in team fights. Renata ult, Corky just being Corky, and then the Gragas. And now this is an extra degree of disengage. So you take away the Tom Kench. This does potentially open up a Senna slightly later into the draft. I wonder if Burning Core have some lanes they could maybe pick a Senna with, maybe try and nip that in the bud, or whether they have something immediately they can throw towards that Tom Kench potential Senna coming out. Yeah, we'll see what their priority is going to lie with uh, their picks. And uh, Jinx is going to be the pick here. I mean, Tam can Jinx, something that we've seen a lot, so just denying that duo is already good enough. So, okay, this is going to be the Jinx. So maybe what you're saying is uh, we can get some early push. Jinx, to ha Jinx, Jinx tends to have a lot of wave control very early on. Question is, why are you going to go lock in alongside that? We have been seeing a lack of engage options over the last kind of couple of patches when Leona's kind of fallen away. Less Alistair being picked too. It kind of felt like Nautilus and then the Rakan being your remaining options. So Yuhi... Of course, roll swaps away from AD carry down to support. Mm -hmm. Played a... Uh, I'm trying to remember the game that they played. It was Leo... In fact, they did play that Leona yeah. last time, which has been a, a bit off the off the boil. But you have this Jinx Rakan. It's into the expected center Tom Kench. And now you're looking at Burning Core and saying, okay, you knew this was coming. You didn't have another center lane. Uh, you wanted to pick into this. What's the plan now? I mean, you really have to ask, especially with this scale coming in now. Hawks, they are just banking on the scaling, it feels to me. And Burning Core, do you respond to that scaling? Do you try to go more aggressively? Uh, so many questions. Do you even match the top lane banned out uh, to avoid getting banned out? 
Well, this is Ray Farky. Ray Farky does love himself an honorable 1v1 as far as LGL top laners go. And this is a real treat. You saw the Gragas band away from Ray Farky. That was kind of his flavor of the split in spring. But Ray Farky is a player that has always loved his carries. And this Jace was a champion which basically only he played with a couple of games coming out from the likes of maybe Paz or Cog Cog was the other real player. Of course, he's not playing in the LGL currently. This is going to be a real treat. Get to see Carry versus Carry Kanatsu, the new upstart Carry top player versus Ray Farky, one of our slightly older veterans in that. Uh, it's weird to think of him as a veteran now, but one of our older Carry players in the league. Top lane is becoming a really fun matchup to watch. It is indeed, but I mean, for if, when I do the maths, Jace tends to beat out Kill pretty hard in the early game. At least Ooh. that's what my play by play brain is telling me. But, uh, so uh, the thing is, on. like, so we we can dive into that as we head head into the rift. But yeah. you look at the likes of your LPL Kale players and the likes of the shy. Thing about Kale is that if um, you end up getting access to the wave and you get to stack up your passive, which is move speed towards enemy champions and then attack speed, and then Jace misses like one spell spell on you, you can turn things around with a lot of damage in extended trades as long as you don't get burst out. It's actually a very interactive matchup. You can see uh, a couple of different itemization changes as well. I believe someone built Crown into Jace the other day which was um it's good in specific situations i won't go too deep on it now unless it happens in game but i'm really looking forward to this top side matchup as it's pretty sh it should be pretty obvious now <laughs> yeah absolutely and lee sin is going to be the lock-in for flawless going for the early aggression and lee sin jace i mean if jace isn't lethal by himself the duo definitely is and this is now a 4-5 um, jungle pick locked in by, by both of these teams. Now, often we will see Wukong, Viego picked up very, very early, but this time we can see that there were a lot of jungle bands coming into that second round. Robin, of course, uh, Viego is still up and available, would be a fairly easy lock-in, but it's not the best go button. So now you're looking mm -hmm. at Tom Kench W and then a Viego flash W as your kind of weak engage I, hawks seriously need to lock in something else that can help with that but they only have mid lane to really start uh, helping out with that there aren't that many engage options from that lane lissandra is something that was played on the first day by dasha and it is going to be the lock in for that engage okay so that has been something that dasha has picked uh, a little already of course and yes that does help you in that regard burning corner very very squishy lots of people that can get picked off it's going to be the oriana locked in for dice and suddenly you're looking at everyone piling in on a melee range uh, lissandra as she dives in and everyone else being very low range until kale gets later into that game that shockwave to me seems like it has huge value you look at the setup for that shockwave as well the rakan the lee sin there are so many tools to set up dice for those shockwaves that yeah i, I think burning core they've got a pretty good composition all things considered i think that both teams have uh, a couple of things that we need to start looking out for one thing for me is burning core if they really start wanting to roll over this top side with the uh, the jace and the lee sin particularly i think this top jungle duo is going to be incredibly important mm -hmm. where that really starts to break is actually can you get a Rakan into the mix? Actually, can you get a Tom Kench roaming up into the mix too? Tom Kench has more roam pressure than he did in previous situations with that Abyssal Dive, of course, bringing you CC much earlier into that game. I'm looking forward to seeing how these uh, supports end up joining the front and the top side, because for me, every, every eye of mine, which is two, are glued towards that top side. I mean, I absolutely... I only do. have two eyes. Yeah. I'm not some biblically accurate angel, uh, I mean, sadly. look, you know, uh, unfortunately. You can maybe, like, get some of those uh, googly eyes, just glue them on your forehead or something, you get more. <laughs> I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> Fair enough, good to know. But I, I agree, but there is uh, another point uh, that I do want to bring up, is that should Burning Core fail to get their top side ahead, I'm looking at this comp thinking about the later stages, and I don't see anyone who is able to face check into the Hawks. Like, you need to be at least in a comfortable position by the mid game. Did you get Berlin, or did I say something stupid? I think that might be a Berlin angle. Okay, never mind. So, Nightmare hopefully will be joining us soon again. Uh, so, I will continue with my point, assuming that I said something right. So, uh, top line definitely the one to watch because, as Nightmare pointed out earlier in the draft, there just isn't re really any tanks. On the side of Brandico, it's a very squishy composition. And then you look at the Hawks, you've got the Lissandra, you've got the, well, Kale for the damage. It's pretty self explanatory And Viego as well, jumping into the back line. If these guys start getting the reset, especially with the Viego and Lissandra passives, things can get very dangerous very quickly.
for this composition. So yeah, they, they need to find leads. And looking at other places in the map, I don't necessarily think Oriana versus Lissandra is where you will be looking. Neither really is the bot lane for Burning Corso. Topside is the only remaining side of uh, the map, really, which you could be uh, looking forward to. And Hawks, I think they're only job. Okay, we've oh. got an emergency sub, don't we? <laughs> Hello, mate. How are you? Hello. I was busy eating my breakfast, I'll be honest, mate. <laughs> I mean, you did your job on the desk, you, you, you could have just enjoyed it, you know, but... Uh, I, was, I, was, <laughs> I was watching, I was enjoying... I mean, this Kale topside, though, I think it's actually really interesting. I think you, my Mara highlighted, you've doubled down on it. Um, and, I mean, when you consider the two top laners that we've actually got in question here, obviously, Kanatsu was the player that actually overcame... Ray Farkey, remember, that was the big showboat when he joined Rascal Justice. He was the new prodigy. Um, and something I really want to see here is Ray Farkey claiming dominance once again, claiming that second place spot, being the second be best Japanese talent in the top lane. Obviously, no one beats our Lord and Savior, Abe, Ebby, Obviously, but we can all attempt, right? Of course. I mean, hey, trying is the first step. You know, if you don't try, you'll never succeed. Um, but hey, with that way, Farky, I feel like he's set up. I mean, we have highlighted this many times already. Uh, Obviously. But the composition for Bird and Core, I feel like it's just meant to play around this Jays, especially in the early stages. Yeah, absolutely. And and I mean, the other thing is obviously this this bot lane in general. Um, this is Dent versus and Yuhi. This is Yuhi's second support game, and his first one on that Leona. I'm gonna be real, Kashka wasn't sold he had the most yeah. deaths he died like seven times his engages were really weird this was like you know what it was kind of where i realized i was like man i am tough on some of the support players that we have in our region sometimes i have very high expectations alchemy i apologize Pooh, from way back when i apologize because you he's positioning isn't wasn't so great and and let's be real rakan kashka a champion yeah. you'd have really good positioning on i feel Absolutely. Uh, I mean, there is a reason why you usually tend to go as much tenacity on the champion as you possibly can. Is because if you ever get caught out, that's kind of it. You, you don't have that great of an engagement when you're isolated from the rest of your team. And yeah, Yuki is going to have to uh, pull in some work because he's one of the primary engagers for Burning Core. Uh, uh, I mean, that's that's absolutely right. Engage, yeah. Um. Sorry, I'm just trying to do settings things. Um, That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Hello, sir. I he cut out. We got oh. in there for a half a second. Well, he requested me to oh, lower... A second. That's probably not very good. Okay, well, we heard that sentence now. There we go. Well, I'm hoping that it's going to help a little bit more um, in regards to that. That would be very helpful if I could uh, continue to keep speaking on the stream. Uh, I'm getting a little bit of internet issues uh, currently working off a mobile hotspot, which is, of course, not the best for live broadcast. But speaking of live broadcast, game's going into game right now. We are indeed. Let's see which of these teams is going to pick up their win in the LJL. And there we go. We are on the rip right now. Both teams just standard cover. Nothing uh, fancy or nothing uh, well out of the ordinary. So, uh, I have to then, of course, track what's going to happen with this top side of the map. And yeah, we, it's, uh, both of you highlighted as well when I was uh, taking a quick step out to fix internet stuff. It really is about how these uh, top jungles start to uh, really interact with each other. Indeed it is. And uh, <clears throat> you can see Flawless making his way down towards the bot side, making sure that he will be up towards the top lane by the time the first clear finishes. Same story actually for Blank, uh, by the looks of things. So we will be hopefully seeing some action in the top lane come third minute. And all right, I think I'm... So... Uh... uh... Um, I think I might just keep talking because uh, the internet there on the side not necessarily having the greatest time. <laughs> oh no, okay, well. Both junglers are starting leashless. I, I feel like that's something to point out is that neither team really knows where they are coming from in blank. We'll be looking for an early gank. That is the flash route forces both of the summoners immediately from dice. Really nice and creative setup there from Hawks. 
Yeah, no, I don't think that Bernard is back yet. I mean, the fact that uh, Bernard and Core have no idea where Blank uh, was, because, you know, of course, Lee Shiles, Star and Vigo could be anywhere, dies, losing both the summoners, and the bigger thing to highlight here, no one really expects the Lissandra to start with the Ring of Frost. I mean, why would you? Most of the lanes, especially if you're into a ranged matchup, not something that you necessarily have to have on the level one. And that immediately means no summoners on dice, easy picking for the next gang, but it should happen uh, very soon, especially that clients are not on the longest of cooldowns from all the summoners out there in the game. And both junglers making their way up to the top side, unimpeded otherwise. Uh, Flawless I am here camps. to save you, Kashka. I know Thank I would grace you <laughs> with my Omega brain, truly, to bring a color cast of perspective as Flawless comes in for an invade. Well, he, he does. A, he tried something. He had a thought of something, but he missed the cue. His time was a little bit off. And I mean, that's that's just how it goes at the moment. If Nymera does have his internet, he will grace us with the angel presence that is himself. But um, uh, Berlin is doing its damn best to do its uh, internet stuff. <clears throat> yeah. Unfortunately, uh, wasn't meant I to thought, be sometimes. I thought, you did I thought you handled it really well, mate. I'll give you that. I'll give you some on-air yes. feedback. Oh. <laughs> We take those. All right, well, big fight going on in the bottom lane. Rhino getting a double knockup, and uh, let's see if they have the damage to finish off a dent, or at least maybe for some summoners. There goes the cleanse. The ignite was dropped down as well, and two summoners for one. Hogs will take it. Oh hell yeah! And I mean that's on the eighty carry. That's that's the important target to blow all those summoners on. And and let's be real, Rakan isn't really a supportive champion that can really protect, unlike mm -hmm. Rhino on this um, time catch. So. This is just going to emphasize it. Viego also parving down bot side. Flawless is actually having to hold a uh, shadow, even though he really wants to go top side. Think about it. He's got that golems on the top side. He, he would love to clear that out. He just doesn't really have the ideal pathing. Dasher was spotted out there. So all the pressure is going to be thrown on this bot lane for the, probably the next at least four minutes. Oh my god, this is pretty gross. But then this is Hawks getting pro arguably the best bot lane in the game at the moment, Kashka. Expectations yeah. should expect this, right? I mean, yeah, perhaps. Definitely Senna, Tom Kench, you know, if we're in the meta of aggressive ADCs, you can punish, but Jinx, yeah, I don't really think you're matching that, especially the insane amount of sustain that Marvel is going to have with that fleet footwork, which, uh, you know, isn't something I brought up before, but uh, yeah, he's not dropping low, is he? No, he's not. And I mean, this this is the, the thing that I'm more surprised about more than anything else is Kinatsu is farming relatively comfortably mm -hmm. in this chase matchup, which is not how this how pre six is meant to go. Uh, I mean, I say that and then he gets chunked down a bit. So uh, <clears throat> thanks, Kinatsu. Um, but I mean, hey, he's got 30, 31, 32. He's, he's catching every he's only really a wave down. Yes, which um, could have been way worse. He could have actually been far more for like two to three waves down. Ray Falky not doing as much punishing as he should have. And he's got no mana man, so he's going to have to recall. And he's gone phase rush, which isn't out of the realm, but I'm not a huge fan of the phase rush just to go a little bit faster. I think the utility that offers is actually not as good as some of the power output you can take with some other runes, personally. The dice. Yeah, another gang coming through. The clans comes out. And Ooh. the shockwave as well. He is going to be able to just walk away from this one. Oh my, that was um, very well played by Dicer with the cleanse, with the with the shockwave. Didn't have to blow his flash and has got spellbook, so he's going to be able to teleport straight back in. Did miss the cannon, so that feels bad, man. But hey, you, you take it how it is. And the game's back to a point of arguably parody again. Ah, love how that works. Yeah, I mean, no kills. The gold is basically even CS advantages across uh, the lanes somewhat balance out. I mean, Ray Farky has got the big one that we have mentioned already, sitting at 14, though, you know, arguably not as big as it should be. I'm kind of, I don't want to say disappointed yet because Follas is in level 6, but like, I want to see more action from both these junglers, but especially the Lee Sin. Uh, yeah, no, this Lee Sin needs to get early aggression because obviously, as you've mentioned, uh, this is what we've seen in like previous, uh, in other regions. I mean, I was watching a bit of the LPL yesterday. I was just mm -hmm. having a bit of saucy looking. Um, and like one of the players, I think it was uh, the, the jungler for RA, so rare. Uh, 
Tom? Is that how they say that? I'm not I quite don't sure. know. Regardless, um, they had like five kills by like the 15 minute mark. They were all over the, the map, basically. Huge source of pressure, getting all those early ganks in. That's what you need to do as a Lee Sin. That's what Lee Sin has always done. You're not basically just a level six champion, unlike Kale or even Diego to an extent. You actually have a lot of utility before you hit that. Uh, Yuki's missing a lot of these um, knockups, which is a bit sad for him, but hey ho. Uh, but Fool is still not getting anything done, now hitting six and Blank being able to relatively farm up and actually getting almost off a successful gank, remember, on dice with that cleanse, with mm -hmm. that shockwave that they had to use. I would argue and say Blank has probably done a bit more in this early game, and Diego, Diego scales Kashka. Oh, yeah, absolutely it does. It, it's a disgusting late game champion, and uh, come on, flawless. You've got level six. You've got no excuse now, right? I mean, you said this is an early game champion. Now you've got this set up yourself, and I gotta do something with this champion. Why else are you picking Lee Sin? Because. <laughs> LPL and LCK are picking it, so I want to pick my favorite champion that I've got more games in. I mean, L Lee Sin is like the jungle bread and butter, isn't it? Like, you have to True. learn that champion before you can do anything else, but not really getting much done at the moment. Yuhi hasn't got a sweeper, so at the moment he is just enjoying vision, or rather being on vision, but not being aware of it. He's sightseeing. <laughs> he is. <laughs> His, his, his AD carry reset, he was like, there's no point. Oh! Okay, there we go! Flies with the flash, with the kick, brings back Kinatsu right into Ray Farky. Dawning Shadow is going to bring down a shield, and Kinatsu getting quite a bit of damage down onto Ray Farky, and there we go. First blood picked up by Burning Core. Yeah, but a lot was used there on that actual kill. Flash from Flawless, obviously had to use their ultimate as well. Did obviously get Kinatsu's uh, flash out, but I mean, Blank is on a Viego, and if Ray Farky feels a little bit saucy, he could take this very quickly. But with creep, with minion damage, uh, respectively also collecting all of that gold and experience, which would have probably been worth the kill on Ray Farky, actually, when you calculate it all up together. Probably better to just collect the wave. Yeah, and there we see the setup for the gang. I mean, the execution was clean. As you said, a lot of resources committed down, but it is a kill at the end of the day. Uh, Hawks didn't get much in return. The only thing we could really, you know, criticize Burning Core here is why not earlier? Yes, absolutely. And th there seemed to be a huge reliance on actually having the kick from Flawless there. Like, they did ward hop um over vision and kinatsu was playing a bit further up without any vision and this was an angle that flawless could exploit so fair play to burning core playing around their angles understanding the max range of some of their stuff but like part of that is going to be like cool you got to kill on kale okay so ray farky now has a decent cs lead at this moment in time now 20 cs what is it going to transition into well it's not transitioned into this dragon because uh, that's the opposite side of the map. So Blank was mm -hmm. able to path down, they were able to secure that, get everything else, because Flawless is now having to clear their jungle, which is what Blank was doing when that gank was happening. So what else are we getting out of this burning core? Because getting Kinatsu a bit down is, is fine, but that wasn't their main priority early game for Hawks. That's their late game insurance. Yeah, absolutely. And even now, Ray Farkin, you can see he's winning the trade, but... but... Are you able to force Kid outside of the lane? Don't really think so. And even the Herald is sitting in Blank's inventory, so no neutral objectives for Burning right. Core to be picking up. One good uh, side for them uh, that I do want to point out is the fact that Dice is still ahead in CS despite all the focus that Hawks threw down towards the mid lane. Mm hmm. Well, they're like, hey, if Kanatsu's going to get focused, let's try and focus this bot lane. All right, Blank, looking for the stun, does find it onto you. Oh, oh my! Damage! And the Heartbreaker to finish off the kill. Hawks on the board, and Dasher, he is a madman diving the 2-2, but it works out in the end. Well, you, they already know exactly. They, they, they <laughs> Flawless, you went through vision. They know exactly what's going on. Kanatsu just goes, okay, I'll just reset. I'll just take bot, uh, mid farm. Who cares about top? They got first turret in bot side everything's going in and they're like hey marble reiner you want to have that kind of mvp caliber performance we know we can have from you dasha you want to join up with the rest of them blank how does that sound you want to be the knight again and they're all like yeah let's do this and kanatsu's like guys i'll just be the role player huge performance and what a paradigm flip from the hawks they're going how can we 
really blow this game up in and out in a way that's favorable to us well i think they just showed it and having a long lane now for your top laner to have farm in this is fantastic for kanatsu you can have dasher play the side lane down in bot side have have kanatsu go top side and he can just literally farm that lane and where's Rayfaki gonna go that's a good angle for them there isn't a good lane for him now and it's only 12 minutes in not great, but something that Nymera pointed out uh, when we talked before the game is that um, in the first game, like, well, I mean, it oh was my more god, about you said him and he's come back. What is this? In this play, Blank and Dasha are working together. Did I pass? Oh, well, I'm going to take my leave now, but thank you so much for returning. And if you do get berlin again, I'll set back in, sir. <laughs> it's a secret tri-cast, basically. They're just swapping out the color cast this when <laughs> necessary. <laughs> right. Yeah, we've got that person who's coming down, but a big shockwave onto two is gonna come through. But Dasha going gold and still staying alive, and he's gonna divide judgment onto himself with the power. The Hawk Squad saving their mid later. Mm hmm. Dice with that Leandris as well. I mentioned it when you were in there, but Dice being such a good pressure sponge, it, it feels like the only thing that Hawks could have done is break open this bot lane. But we look at where we are right now in terms of gold, we're even in terms of turrets. Yeah, okay, Hawks have got that one for their advantage, but that's it. Lads, 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 we're not hearing you for some reason. Has the, have you guys uh, audio what? settings changed a little bit? Both of us, or...? Oh, okay, we just can't hear you, Alex, at the moment. Oh, okay. Well, we're gonna have another team fight, and <laughs> Flawless just gets absolutely destroyed. There we go, Pixie C used in the correct way by the Hogs. They get a kill. The question is, what can they get out of it? Well, the Drake is up now. So... Yeah, apparently Nymera can't be heard on the stream. We can't confirm he is alive and well. Uh, but uh, yeah, you guys can't hear him. So I will just keep talking over what is going on on the screen. Hawks getting that one pick onto Flawless. Absolutely huge returns. They get the mid lane tier one and they get the infernal dragon. Furthermore, it's the Hextech Drake. I mean, goddamn, I love the Hextech Drake, especially the stacking dragons, the soul. I think everything is great about it. So just right now, that's a huge coin flip going the way of hawks i feel like okay so apparently <laughs> i'm back for realsies this time absolutely Let's no go. fingers crossed so this is what happens when the hamster falls off the hamster wheel in the background in this case my internet that's what happens but we have been again just kind of setting the stage for uh what is remember a bit of a grudge match between these two teams we know that they have been very close in terms of their average finish they ended up uh, going together, going up against each other in a bit of a death match. Last playoffs, first round. Burnicore came out on top of that. And uh, the Hawks would love to kind of seal a little bit little bit of this head-to-head -head victory in their own favor for once. Has felt like Burnicore had the upper uh, hand in that matchup just last split. But as it stands right now, you can see that uh, the amount of gold on the top side of the map for Burnicore getting a little bit worrying for Hawks to deal with. Yeah, second completed item here for Ray Farky, and uh, he managed to do pretty well for himself. Uh, Lexi did say before that uh, 
Ray Park, he doesn't have a great lane to go into, but it seems that he's been able to do just fine. So far, so good for them. Uh, again, going to be pushing in most lanes right now, as long as you have the vision to really help with that. So let's go track that vision as we go on. Because actually, Burning Call don't really have that much side lane vision right now. And that's why Ray Farky has to back all the way off in his side lane. Bot lane in the turret already gone down. The Hawks know exactly what they can do with that elongated lane. Doesn't actually matter if they don't have lots and lots of engage. They have enough uh, lane to run down the chase in. Um, that means that actually Kanatsu now gets to pick up a few more resources as uh, Hawks have given them a safe lane to push up in. Yeah, second Herald though, used by Burning Core, they will be able to break open this mid lane. This is, of course, big when it comes to setting up for the objectives, which we will be waiting a few minutes. I feel like the Baron might be the earlier one of the two, so the next two minutes, likely to just see push, vision control, and let's see if Hawks can find any picks in the meantime. Well, there is that, but then the Hawks are up, start on their own uh, two dragons True. right now we have seen often that uh dragon for herald trade we saw that a lot in spring but particularly coming into this split it's felt like a lot of teams have been pretty okay to give up a dragon or two and just flip towards that elder actually that can be the point where you're just like well okay this is where we actually win or lose the game buy yourself a little bit more time to get um some more gold in pocket as it stands Feels like um, Kanatsu, as we said, being given that room to farm, will be able to do that. If you start rocking up to an Elder later on, even with the... Well, I mean, of course, you mm -hmm. have the Dragon yourself this time, right? But, uh, if you start rocking up to later game objectives, uh, with objectives in pocket, these scaling picks start to come really online, and we're going to see a lot of big damage. That in much is for fight. certain. That's Ray Farky will flash over the wall. It's enough to get away. Ooh, Dasher flash. follows it through. The Everfrost finds the root. Blank hops over the wall, and he is going to be able to get the kill. Hawks with the fourth one on the board. I really have to say, I'm impressed with how Blank and Dasher are actually finding those engages together this game. Yeah, and that was something that we kind of criticized yeah, a little bit in game one from them. Only one in the in, all of the Hulk squad. I mean, in the, the records right now, but it felt like right Dash now, would find a good engage, but then Blank wouldn't be there. Blank would find a good engage, but then Dash wouldn't be there. This time, roaming much more as a really pick. All you need to be doing is set up Kanatsu for a later on. That being said, the Baron is going to be up in 20 seconds, and you can already see how much vision set up Burning Core are putting in the topside jungle. I think he might be getting interneted again. Yep, definitely getting interneted. Maybe it's going to be back after a few seconds or so. We will indeed see. Hawks pivoting down towards the bot side, of course. If they get this next Hextech Dragon, they will be on the soul point. So let's see if they can get it. Burning Core moving into the river. Getting some vision of uh, their own. It's but, but well, the problem with the is definitely is very important to get in a situation a... like uh, that. And both teams just really clearing the wave at the same time. Kinatsu will be splashing in the top lane. Does have the teleport to join the fray and Dasher going for a TP down towards the bot lane. No vision there. So I don't think Burning Core are aware of it. Hawks, do you have a bit of a pincer movement on this dragon? It's down to 2k, down to 1k. It will be secured by Flawless. But the fight now is going to break out. Kanatsu teleports down to the bottom as well. Massive knockup coming through and dash up. He's on the first kill of the fight. Burning Core in the disengage mode. Blank hopes forward with the Heartbreaker. It's a kill for the dragon. I think Burning Core take it. Unless they lose Baron right now. That's actually a very important caveat. <laughs> but I don't think Hawks are going to quite rush it, so no worries there. And, um, well, that delays the soul. We are going to take a look at the replay. I like the idea here for Dasher to go for this teleport. There's no vision. As, as do I, Kashka. Yeah. As do I also like this teleport. The idea execution is great, but I feel like the TP coming in from uh, Kinatsu was a bit late here. The thing is, if Kinatsu was here probably arguably a, a fair bit earlier, um, even we're talking two, three seconds earlier, he would have been there for at least the initial engage which would have helped them, I'm not saying secure the dragon, but secure a larger win into this team fight, which can, could have then, as you had alluded to afterwards, 
could have turned into a Baron for them because they are a Baron taking team. Like Kinatsu with some assistance, they can ch they can chain down uh, a Baron without any issue. So a bit awkward. Hawk, uh, Burning Core basically stemming that bleeding for a bit. And I mean, Burning Core have decent scaling themselves. I mean, you mm -hmm. just land an Orianna Shockwave and a few Jinx Rockets in the background and you're gonna, you're gonna have a decent combo fight. Like the front to back team fight for the Hawks is, is pretty disjointed. So it'll be interesting, but I thought you handled it all fantastically, Kashka, with the internet issues we have been having here on the LGLOU today. Oh. I, Berlin's it doing its sometimes. best. Yeah, sometimes, you know, uh, places just hate you. Definitely not a superstitious <laughs> belief or anything. Just a uh, place in general. Yeah, just a place. Okay, Dasher looking for yet another ultimate this time to Floyd's, but a double shockwave and Dasher, he's just dead. Hulk's going way too deep on this on the side. engage. But Burning Core, they can't follow through. No, he can't. And I mean, that was just, again, they did a fight without Kinatsu or Kinatsu wasn't quite on the same page as the rest of the team. It's very hard to say which it is because mm -hmm. the idea always seems to be there. It's just the timing window is so important when you're playing a champion like Kale, especially when you haven't got your um, uh, your Kraken Slayer as well as also your TP up. Uh, the damage output isn't going to be huge. In oh, no, Kinatsu. Gonna get jumped on by Flawless, but nothing decisive. Has got the Flash and the Ultimate, of course, to play with, so staying quite safe. We are gonna take a look at the replay, and yeah, the disconnect. Kinatsu is just taking the turret right now. Yeah, and then the team decide to go at them. It, 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 I mean, this is a spot where it is a 4v4. They lost the 4v4 um, fair and square, and then Rayfarki came in afterwards, which is when Kanatsu basically came in. So, I mean, that was just kind of discoordinated, and Rhino obviously wasn't close enough to eat Dasher, which would have definitely assisted. We did see, obviously, in that, that prior team fight that you casted, um, that there was just so much eating and keeping Dasher alive with the Kale Ultimate into eating them. Like, it can mm -hmm. be very tricky to actually kill a member on the Hawk's side if the whole team is on the same page of the Hawks. But Burning Core have been able to find these opportunities around the map where that's not really been a thing. Now, important thing to note is um, Marble is on the center. And we haven't really talked about the souls. Over 104 souls is now on this on, ah. is marble on at 25 minutes. That's not bad timing. Not great, but not bad considering everything that's been going on in this game. And they've been quietly farming, getting away. They've got already got that umbral glaive. So I mean, hey, there's a chance that marble with Kinatsu that they can just take the scaling angle. Absolutely, Fruit I do agree. Some say, I guess. Uh, though something that I do want to turn it around in terms of quietly farming up. Look at dice. Hmm. He's 60 CS ahead, three items hmm. on the Oriana. Has got only one kill, that was the shutdown found onto Dasher in the last fight. I mean, they, these shockwaves are genuinely terrifying right now. I mean, that's, that is a, an angle. We saw what one shockwave did all that time ago at the, in the mid lane. We haven't really seen DICE land a huge multi-man shockwave, but mm -hmm. I mean, it's always on the cards, especially when you group up for a team fight. Ah. That's what this Hextech Dragon's probably going to be for. Last time, obviously, Burning Core were able to burn it down before all of the Hawks were able to respond. This time, Dash is in the mid lane. All of the rest of the Hawks are together. I mean, landing a, a Sonic Blast onto the big frog isn't really going to do too much, but we're getting front to back team fights, Kashka. Dasher teleporting behind his own team. No flanks, no weird angles this time around. The Dragon has been aggroed. It is going to hit. Hawks, uh, admittedly, not so too much of damage, posturing on both sides. You, he has got the flash, has got the ultimate. The dragon is now getting low. It's gonna count out to his mind fight. It gets oh, reset, no. and Flores can't finish it quite off. Dice will have to get away. The dragon, it has been secured by Burning Core Dasher. Goes golden in the front line. The divine judgment as well, just to keep him alive. And the rhino with the chase forces Flawless to flash over the wall. Nobody will die, and Burning Core will take the dragon. I mean, ultimately, though, if you look at the uh, uh, the actual outcome of that fight, multiple summoners were having to be used from the side of Burning Core. Flash from Yuhi, Dice, and Flawless in that team fight. Obviously, the spellbook did help with Dice with that cleanse that they happened to get, so that's at least the cooldown that they'll have back. But I mean, this means that's another dragon for Burning Core, and imagine if one of those two had been able to go. The reset of the dragon, though, that's... 
That's the suckiest thing for Blank here. Just lost the aggro here because Flawless came in a slightly closer, which then forces the dragon to reset to attack the closest target. While that's all happening, though, the rest of the Hawks are going to try and go on to them. But the issue is Dasher went in while the rest of the team weren't quite ready. However, they were able to do what they've done in prior fights before and keep multi-members alive. Flawless obviously flashing away. It's just really unfortunate for the Hawks. There's definitely a kill on the table there. They just weren't quite on the same page. Yeah, I mean, Dasher went in at the same time Blank went for the Dragon. You can't really fault either of these decisions, but they were not doing the same thing. Now, Baron started out by the Hawks. Burning Core are fully aware of it. You have that control wood in the pit down to 7,000. Then and Ray Farky will be coming through. Dasher looking for the engage. Does fight the ultimate, and that is you. He taken down. Big Shock Evan to Marble the Rocket oh! from dead. He's going to be able to equalize then without the Senna. I don't know if Hawks will be able to sustain through this whole fight. and. They know that themselves, they will not want to spend any more time than necessary. Absolutely not. And the fact that it ended up being AD carry trade for support there. Not an outcome I was really expecting with how that fight began. But oh my god, they go one for more. Dasher finding another massive root with Blank on the side. He can't find a way in. Taking so extremely low. The Devourer is going to be coming out. But Kinatsu, he can't lay down the damage. Level 14 kill, not hitting quite as hard. And Hawks... It will force away Burning Core from this tower, but that is a string of team fight losses, if you can call it that. Oh, absolutely. But the thing that's really weird to look at is obviously when you look at the gold department, they're at parody. Oh, uh, yeah. Actually, it's this game is very much very close. The issue is, and it's something that I believe uh, Nymera alluded to in the pick and ban phase, is that. Um, when it comes for uh, tools for CC chaining and actually controlling how these fights are going to go, you're basically limited to Lissandra, and that's it. Yeah, you've got a slow on uh, Tom Kench with the Whiplash, with your tongue. Yeah, you can do something, um, obviously, with Senna. You can try and throw out your stun. You've got the same with Diego, but that's, that's it. You've got a few stuns if you happen to hit them. You've got a, a knock up with Tom Kench, you've got a slow with the Tom Kench, and you've got Lissandra's ult. That's it. Yeah. That is actually it. Yuki arguably has all of that just in his one champion. With the shockwave, with flawless, with the kick and everything else. Like and and even Chompers with uh for Dian, like like for Dead rather, like there's a lot of CC on the side of Burning Core compared to what the Hawks are operating on, and that's really starting to be an exploitative point now for Burning Core in this match. You can see that Hawks are, are struggling to move forward. They are struggling to really find their mark in the team fight. Dasher goes in, finds the old great follow up, not necessarily present most right, of the time. Yeah. And yeah, we look at the levels. Kanatsu very close to level six. It actually does hit it right now. So let's see if that changes the fortune for Hawks. We'll have to see. I mean, obviously, this is the angle for the Hawks. Mm -hmm. We'll scale. We'll just figure out the scale angle. Now, they do infer scale way harder than the side of burning core they've got a center that's just how this champion works but i mean i don't really feel like you want to put all your eggs in just the marble center basket it's not a champion we've really seen him perform on arguably even throughout when he was on v3 academy this wasn't really a play he was playing far more of the hyper carries big flashy jinx aphelios-esque champion so we'll have to see at this moment in time though uh i think it's not crazy to bet on burning core now yeah, they are having just better control of the battleground, it feels like. You look at the exchange that just happened in the mid lane, the range from Ray Farky able to lay down the Poe from far away. It is going to be both Baron and Dragon on the table, and uh, Hawks, they are looking like they're going to go towards the Baron Kinatsu tag by the Shockwave and brought down to half health. Well, he does have TP, so Kinatsu can very much re look to recall and then also come back into the base. But it looks like they're actually trying to say, hey, Burning Core, you guys go take the dragon, get your dragon soul, get it, get yourself to soul point, and we'll take this Baron. But, the, but Burning Core understand what's going on here, and they're going to try and fight them. No shockwave is the big one, but Dasher on the side, he's half held just by the basic abilities coming out from Dice. The Baron down to 4,000. Flawless is around. He's got this might. He's got the kick. Dasher is going to go behind the Baron thanks to the Hex Gates and Blank. Just getting brought low by the Baron. Damage Yuki tagged by the ultimate and the Rhino will be able to take him down. Flawless going in. It's rooted by the Everfrost and that is two kills for Hawks. That is the five they wanted to take and they should be able to take this Baron. 
And Burning Core, you just kind of walked at them slowly, approaching them. Ho ho ho, it's it me, Dio, no. Um, it's the Hawks and Kanatsu 16. And Dasher was able to get around the side. And Flawless ulted Dasher into the saving arms of the rest of his team, as opposed to trying to get behind him to kick him in when he was only at like one third of his health bar. So much went wrong for the side of Burning Core. Their token prize, which we can call it, that was the dragon. Yeah. So they are on soul point. So that it is an angle for them. And I mean, hey, with a jinx, getting all that attack speed, that is, that is, that is fun. But let's talk about this. Because you mentioned, obviously, Dash got taken super low just from dice and auto attacks, really. And that's what's happening there. But what we really want to pay attention to is just how low this Baron gets, because it really forces Burning Core to make a decision. It's at 3k. Dasher comes around here. But look at Flawless, immediately kicks into the arms of the Saving Grace. But then the whole time, Kinatsu and Marble are just doing all this damage because the rest of the team aren't paying attention to what's actually important. Are you Burning Core? Which allows the side of the Hawks to secure that Baron. And, uh, well, I guess um, to use a term which I really don't want to use, Kashka, they flip the switch let's go no <laughs> <laughs> i mean let's see how much uh, hawks can do with this ban because i am a yeah. big fan of hex deck stacking i genuinely think it's the strongest soul so dragon individual dragon especially if you get multiple copies of it so to say so burning core having three hex decks is huge you mentioned the jinx all the extra attack speed and they're on the soul point as well so Hawks, they need to get value from this Baron, because if not, when that Dragon comes up in the next four or so minutes, I am worried. Okay, Dasha, Dasha he's gonna go in again, massive roots, and that is way Farky dead. One member down, Burning Core will have some trouble defending the base, and the Siege is laid, the cards are played. Hawks will be trying to take down this Inhibitor and succeed in doing so, Inhibitor sure to follow. Are they going to keep going with this? They are in a 4v5 still for 30 seconds. I, I would like them to reset and not get too greedy yeah. here. I would really like them to go and join um, Dasher, which is what they're trying to do here. They're trying to pincer, try and force them out and allow Dasher to escort this wave in. So then Dasher can get these auto attacks. And now the team feel more comfortable with the wave now coming in mid. They can force that with the Baron buff on Kinatsu. And then they get this bot lane at the same time. They haven't got a wave prep for topside, but hey, you just take getting two inhibitors very happily here. And now the side get to reset and um, I believe in about two minutes that's when that dragon will be popping up which basically means these inhibitors are going to be down for while the dragon comes up which means then basically the hawks get to secure into soul point themselves and probably in about seven or eight minutes if this game isn't over and already won by the hawks they also have a backup plan with this dragon of soul as well we're gonna take another look at the engage by Dasher. He just keeps finding those and the rest of the team is there to follow up. The Beautiful stuff from Hawks. But the other thing, um, Kashka, in comparison to when those engages were happening when they were like level 11, level mm -hmm. 10, items have come in now. Yeah. The Hawks do damage even when they just land a little bit of this chain CC, which isn't much of anything, and I'm still going to criticize them for that. Um, but now when they land a little bit of it, they're able to actually execute, and a few abilities do a lot more than they were doing. So uh, Burning Core, if you get caught out now, they're, the Hawks are willing to just go, 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 dive, dive, dive. And with a 4,000 Baron buff play, I don't blame them, really. Yeah, uh, no Baron buff though to siege this tower and against level 18 Oriana from DICE. I don't think you're getting anywhere near that structure, Hawks, but they are just buying time. The Dragon is up in 1 minute 30. And uh, Hawks, they're in a position where they could end this game with one more fight. They have got there with great engages. They got the Baron buff. You know, it's not necessarily been clean along the way, but they're almost there. They just need to actually finish the game now. Yeah, they do. And, and what I actually like about this is there's an extreme slow push happening on the bot side for the Hawks at the moment. Mm -hmm. They are literally allowing those ra waves to prep. It should prep. If I wish I could draw right now on the screen. Um, it should prep just above where the opening is for that second tier tower for the side yeah. of the Hawks with, with when these minions meet. So, and yes, perfect. So that's where it's going to meet. Kanatsu is now sprinting around to try and do this because what they want to do is they want to have a huge wave now going into the side of Burning Core's base. So that basically, if they want to contest this, they're sacking this wave and they can't contest for this dragon. They haven't prepped it perfectly. So actually, it's not going to work out. I actually wanted, wanted Kanatsu just to watch the wave, like just to literally stare at it menacingly. 
and then to have this third and final wave come in it's not going to be in a great spot but i think the side of burning core should just sacrifice this and go okay guys you you take this dragon we'll try and prep for baron and maybe try and find a good spot there and they do have tools to still do that we haven't really mm -hmm. seen the quickness out from yuhi really getting on multiple members and really charming everybody we haven't seen that huge shockwave outside of that one we did see I'm still waiting to see it, and I mean, that is still an angle for Burning Core. They can still do a huge amount of damage out of just a combo nation play. Yeah, we, we just haven't had that connect yet. Death Capital no. finished for dice. We've got three and a half items on them, so the carries are there for Burning Core. They just need to put the pieces together, and yeah, I mean, I want to see you here on that Rakan get a solid engage into the shockwave that definitely would impress me from burning core because despite the fact that it feels like they've been on the back foot this whole game they're still very much in a position where they can win it yeah and this is going to be a second game i'll argue on yuhi against a, a more middle of the pack team obviously this time mm -hmm. not really showing up very high not really landing those engages finding they're kind of existing in the game but not really doing too much but we'll have to see how this next one goes because this next team fight could be a shift in momentum but we'll have to wait and see lawless isolated from the rest of his team blank and dasher will not be chasing him down instead just let the bot wave crash in the baron is up and i mean there's full vision from hawks in the top side jungle burning core need to clear out a lot of it but they're not starting the objective just yet okay i think that is going to be the goal button press now yeah, and I mean, this is Kinatsu uh, Marble. This is like they have infinite sustain now with Marble at this point in time. They have the Kinatsu who also has that incidental heal on Kale. So they could just kind of do this, get it really low and kind of force the side of Burning Core or more than anything, Flawless to do something. And look oh, at that! Oh, Dasher, you are just beautiful on this. Lysandra, double kill going the way of Rhyna. And that is a wipe. That is a clean fight from Hawks. Triple kill for the time cage that's the game that's it huge performance that knock up rhino you actually have a second champion that isn't rel where you get to do three or four man things it's a knock up on a time cage that's really hard to do we rarely even saw gang do that um consistently the fact is though this is the hawks and they're turning on cash cut they are going to be able to take the win against Burning Core. You have to be uh, come the, on, guys. Don't, no, don't, leave me hang, don't leave me hanging. Oh, the inhibitors. Guys, inhibitors. The inhibitors. Kill it. There we go. Okay. They will be able to take this win against Burning Core, getting some revenge for Spring as they're going to put themselves on the board. One to one. Well done to the Hawks. This was something we really needed to see from them. This was a moment which could be rather defining and it wasn't perfect by any stretch of the imagination. It wasn't clean either, but once they got a bit of momentum going, that Baron, I feel especially, it felt like it just didn't stop from there. No, it, it was engages after engages finding their mark with the rest of the team there to back it up. As we said, hiccups in the mid game. We definitely can question, uh, you know, their execution and their synergy in some of those mid game fights, and especially how they would match up against one of our top three teams. But against Burning Core, it worked. And Hawks, that is such that is so much more of a better start than we saw from them in spring. It it, it really was. Um, obviously, their spring performance they struggled to get any wins whatsoever really um outside of maybe the bottom two teams um whereas this one this showed a lot and they did it when they had basically no engage outside of dasha who was finding a lot of really good <laughs> angles in all True. fairness like i want to see him play yone and just do like two three man ults on that that's another way of doing engage without engaging but you are the engage yone I mean, maybe. I'm all here for it. His Lissandra is looking clean, so... Yeah, you know. Two games maybe. in a row looking really solid on the champion. I think that's a great point to highlight. And I mean, that's part of the beauty of a player like Dasha. His champion pool is so wide because the man can literally play most of the top lane champions and most of the mid lane champions because he's played both roles. So he is just so well versed. Like, I'm excited to see something like an Aurelia coming out of him. That would certainly be something. It would. But what a performance yeah. from this team of the Hawks and getting a W on the board.
Yeah, they did indeed. And uh, are we throwing off to a break or guide me uh, here? I mean, we can, we'll just keep going for a bit, mate. Fair we'll we'll okay. just keep going for a little bit. We'll then go on a break and then when yeah, we'll come no, back, okay. we'll come in for game number two. <laughs> Yeah, okay, well, absolutely, though, I agree. Um, something to note, though, I touched on it earlier, is now the real question that Hawks have is how will that work against the likes of Rascal Jester, Sengoku, and mm. BFM? Because you botch those mid-game fights, I don't think you get to the late-game fights. No, I think you're right with highlighting that. Um, I think this is a team that they'd very much need to kind of just go, okay, guys, well done on getting what you did get. But don't expect that's going to happen for every other game from here, because a lot of the better teams, Rascal Jester, as you highlighted, Sengoku and Detonation Focus Me, they're not going to roll over like that. They're going to fight you at every angle. They're going to be better at rotating around the map. And I think there were angles where if Burning Call were a little bit more together, they absolutely could have punished side lane angles, mm -hmm. split pushes, even responded. I mean, at least they picked up all those dragons. Right, like True. that was a threat. They got three dragons. They got their uh, commiseration prizes. It was just that next step after. That's what we're looking for for the side of Burning Core. And I, I do hate to do this, especially on broadcast, because it the broadcast is a special place. The podcast and other places. That's where I can be more um, divisive, as I can, as I like to be. But second game in a row. I'm really not quite sold on Yuki's support. I'm hopeful that we're going to see a pick come out that really excites me. Uh, mm -hmm. But this Rakan, I don't know if I saw a good quickness that whole game. And we didn't see any huge flanks either. Yeah, uh, I'm going to try to be a bit more diplomatic. I think Dice That's... doesn't, it, it doesn't feel like he found his place in the team yet. Uh, I would it, agree it with you on that. It feels yeah. like he's mismatched from the rest of the team. And when he clicks, that's going to be a whole different burning core that we're going to see. We're already seeing some good things from them. So I'm definitely not giving up on this team. But right now, yeah, bot lane needs ironing out. Yes, but we'll we'll have to see. Two games in a row. I'm not going to get too doughty. Exactly. I'm not getting too negative. I'm just like, not seeing it yet, Yuki. I want to see a good pick. And then I'll, I'll get on board. Um, similar to his Aphelios back in 2020. I wasn't sure on him on a lot of champions. But his Aphelios was dope, and I will defend that point like till the cows come home. Similar to, uh, uh, no, I was about to compare him to Honey and his Jinx, but nothing compares to Honey and his Jinx. But talking about Honey and his Jinx, that's a player we're going to be seeing very soon, Kashka. That is true. He's going to be coming up in the next game, so definitely a lot to look forward to. I mean, I, I kind of think Jinx might be banned in this one, but we'll see. Decent shot. But let's wander over to a quick break, mate. We'll see if we can get Nymera back in for the next desk. And uh, we'll see you, ladies and gentlemen, very, very soon. <laughs> 